We continue today with chapter 24. Salvation from Fear Before your brother's holiness the world is still, and peace descends on it in gentleness and blessings so complete that not one trace of conflict still remains to haunt you in the darkness of the night. He is your savior from the dreams of fear. He is the healing of your sense of sacrifice and fear that what you have will scatter with the wind and turn to dust. In him is your assurance God is here and with you now. While he is what he is, you can be sure that God is noble and will be known to you. For he could never leave his own creation. And the sign that this is so lies in your brother, offered you that all your doubts about yourself may disappear before his holiness. See in him God's creation, for in him his Father waits for you, your acknowledgement that he created you as part of him. Without you there would be a lack in God, a heaven incomplete, a son without a father. There could be no universe and no reality, for what God wills is whole and part of him, because his will is one. Nothing alive that is not part of him, and nothing is, but is alive in him. Your brother's holiness shows you that God is one with him and you, that what he has is yours because you are not separate from him nor from his Father. Nothing is lost to you in all the universe. Nothing that God created has he failed to lay before you lovingly as yours forever and no thought within his mind is absent from your own. It is his will you share his love for you, and look upon yourself as lovingly as he conceived of you before the world began, and as he knows you still. God changes not his mind about his son with passing circumstance, which has no meaning in eternity, where he abides, and you with him. Your brother is as he created him, and it is this that saves you from a world that he created not. Forget not that the healing of God's Son is all the world is for. That is the only purpose the Holy Spirit sees in it, and thus the only one it has. Until you see the healing of the Son as all you wish to be accomplished by the world, by time and all appearances, you will not know the Father nor yourself. For you will use the world for what is not its purpose, and will not escape its laws of violence and death. Yet it is given you to be beyond its laws in all respects, in every way, in every circumstance, in all temptation to perceive what is not there, and all belief God's Son can suffer pain because he sees himself as he is not. Look on your brother and behold in him the whole reversal of the laws that seem to rule this world. See in his freedom yours, for such it is. Let not his specialness obscure the truth in him, for not one law of death you bind him to will you escape. And not one sin you see in him but keeps you both in hell. Yet will his perfect sinlessness release you both, for holiness is quite impartial with one judgment made for all it looks upon. And that is made not of itself, but through the voice that speaks for God in everything that lives and shares his being. It is his sinlessness that eyes that see can look upon. It is his loveliness they see in everything. And it is he they look for everywhere, and find no sight nor place nor time where he is not. Within your brother's holiness, the perfect frame for your salvation and the world's is set the shining memory of him in whom your brother lives, and you along with him. Let not your eyes be blinded by the veil of specialness that hides the face of Christ from him, and you as well. And let the fear of God no longer hold the vision you were meant to see from you. 
Your brother's body shows not Christ to you. He is set forth within His holiness. Choose then His body or His holiness as what you want to see, and which you choose is yours to look upon. Yet will you choose in countless situations, and through time that seems to have no end, until the truth be your decision. For eternity is not regained by still one more denial of Christ in him. And where is your salvation if he is but a body? Where is your peace but in his holiness? And where is God himself but in that part of him he set forever in your brother's holiness? That you might see the truth about yourself set forth at last in terms you recognized and understood. Your brother's holiness is sacrament and benediction unto you. His heirs cannot withhold God's blessing from himself, nor you who see him truly. His mistakes can cause delay, which it is given you to take from him, that both may end a journey that has never begun, and needs no end. What never was is not a part of you, yet you will think it is until you realize that it is not a part of him who stands beside you. He is the mirror of yourself, wherein you see the judgment you have laid on both of you. The Christ in you beholds his holiness. Your specialness looks on his body and beholds him not. See him as what he is, that your deliverance may not be long. A senseless wandering, without a purpose and without accomplishment of any kind, is all the other choice can offer you. Futility of function not fulfilled will haunt you while your brother lies asleep, till what has been assigned to you is done and he is risen from the past. He who condemned himself, and you as well, is given you to save from condemnation, along with you. And both shall see God's glory in His Son, whom you mistook as flesh, and bound to laws that have no power over Him at all. Would you not gladly realize these laws are not for you? Then see Him as not prisoner to them. It cannot be what governs part of God holds not for all the rest. You place yourself under the laws you see as ruling Him. Think then how great the love of God for you must be, that He has given you a part of Him to save from pain and give you happiness. And never doubt but that your specialness will disappear before the will of God, who loves each part of Him with equal love and care. The Christ in you can see your brother truly. Would you decide against the holiness he sees? Specialness is the function that you gave yourself. It stands for you alone, as self-created, self-maintained, in need of nothing, and unjoined with anything beyond the body. In its eyes you are a separate universe, with all the power to hold itself complete within itself, with every entry shut against intrusion, and every window barred against the light. Always attacked and always furious, with anger always fully justified, you have pursued this goal with vigilance you never thought to yield, and effort that you never thought to cease. And all this grim determination was for this. You wanted specialness to be the truth. Now, you are merely asked that you pursue another goal with far less vigilance, with little effort and with little time, and with the power of God maintaining it, and promising success. Yet of the two, it is this one you find more difficult. The, quote, sacrifice of self you understand, nor do you deem this cost too heavy. But a tiny willingness, a nod to God, a greeting to the Christ in you, you find a burden wearisome and tedious, too heavy to be borne. Yet to the dedication to the truth, as God established it, no sacrifice is asked, no strain called forth, and all the power of heaven and the might of truth itself is given to provide the means and guarantee the goal's accomplishment. 
You who believe it is easier to see your brother's body than his holiness, be sure you understand what made this judgment. Here is the voice of specialness heard clearly, judging against the Christ and setting forth for you the purpose that you can attain and what you cannot do. Forget not that this judgment must apply to what you do with it as your ally. For what you do through Christ it does not know. To him this judgment makes no sense at all, for only what his Father wills is possible, and there is no alternative for him to see. Out of his lack of conflict comes your peace, and from his purpose comes the means for effortless accomplishment and rest. And from the workbook, Lesson 189, I feel the love of God within me now. There is a light in you the world cannot perceive, and with its eyes you will not see this light, for you are blinded by the world. Yet you have eyes to see it. It is there for you to look upon. It was not placed in you to be kept hidden from your sight. This light is a reflection of the thought we practice now. To feel the love of God within you is to see the world anew, shining in innocence, alive with hope, and blessed with perfect charity and love. Who could feel fear in such a world as this? It welcomes you, rejoices that you came, and sings your praises as it keeps you safe from every form of danger and of pain. It offers you a warm and gentle home in which to stay a while. It blesses you throughout the day and watches through the night as silent guardian of your holy sleep. It sees salvation in you and protects the light in you in which it sees its own. It offers you its flowers and its snow in thankfulness for your benevolence. This is the world the love of God reveals. It is so different from the world you see through darkened eyes of malice and of fear that one belies the other. Only one can be perceived at all. The other one is wholly meaningless. A world in which forgiveness shines on everything and peace offers its gentle light to everyone is inconceivable to those who see a world of hatred rising from attack, poised to avenge, to murder and destroy. It is the world of hatred equally unseen and inconceivable to those who feel God's love in them. Their world reflects the quietness and peace that shines in them, the gentleness and innocence they see surrounding them, the joy with which they look out from the endless wells of joy within. What they have felt in them, they look upon and see its sure reflection everywhere. What would you see? The choice is given you. But learn and do not let your mind forget this law of seeing. You will look upon that which you feel within. If hatred finds a place within your heart, you will perceive a fearful world held cruelly in death's sharp-pointed bony fingers. If you feel the love of God within you, you will look out on a world of mercy and of love. Today we pass illusions as we seek to reach to what is true in us and feel its all-embracing tenderness, its love which knows as perfect as itself, its sight which is the gift its love bestows on us. We learn the way today. It is as sure as love itself to which it carries us. For its simplicity avoids the snares, the foolish convolutions of the world's apparent reasoning, but serve to hide. Simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is all concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false. 
or good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy, and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past is taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world. Forget this course. And come with holy empty hands unto your God. Is it not he who knows the way to you? You need not know the way to him. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have interposed between the Son and God the Father to be quietly removed forever. God will do his part in joyful and immediate response. Ask and receive. But do not make demands nor point the road to God by which he should appear to you. The way to reach him is merely to let him be, for in that way is your reality proclaimed as well. And so today we do not choose the way in which we go to him, but we do choose to let him come. And with this choice we rest, and in our quiet hearts and open minds his love will blaze its pathway of itself. What has not been denied is surely there, if it be true and can be surely reached. God knows his Son and knows the way to him. He does not need his Son to show him how to find his way. Through every open door his love shines outward from its home within and lightens up the world in innocence. Father, we do not know the way to you, but we have called and you have answered us. We will not interfere. Salvation's ways are not our own, for they belong to you. And it is unto you we look for them. Our hands are open to receive your gifts. We have no thoughts we think apart from you and cherish no beliefs of what we are or who created us. Yours is the way that we would find and follow, and we ask but that your will, which is our own as well, be done in us and in the world, that it become a part of heaven now. Amen. <laughs>